Good morning, my friends. I'm Clover, and today we're going to solve a gas by Philip Newman, anti-king clone. He probably will have given it a more exciting title by the time it gets published, but this is what I've got right now, so we're going to go with this, anti-king clone Sudoku. And I'm going to do something a little bit unusual uh, compared to most of my solve walkthroughs as I'm solving this. I'll explain the rules to you first, and then I'll tell you about the slightly offbeat thing that we're going to be doing with this solve today. So the rules are standard Sudoku rules, so replacing the digits 1 through 9, once each in each row, each column, and each 3x3 three three heavily outlined region. We also have two variant Sudoku rules today. One of them is anti-king. What that means is that digits that see each other by a quote-unquote king's move in chess cannot be equal on top of normal Sudoku rules. So for instance, these two cells, because they are diagonally adjacent, and that's really the only thing that anti-king adds on top of regular Sudoku, is diagonal adjacency. These could not contain the same digit. So basically, cells that touch diagonally can't, see, can't contain the same digit. That's, that's why this variant is also sometimes known as untouch or no-touch Sudoku. And we have clones. These four blue shapes in the grid are all clone regions. Now, digits can potentially repeat within these regions. The rule just says that each of these four regions has to contain exactly the same set of digits in the same orientation. So like if I found out that this was one, two, three, four, which is clearly impossible, but just for the sake of argument, then all four of these would have to be one, two, three, four in that same order. So here's what we're going to do with this puzzle. So I am first going to show you the way that I solved it. Just when I saw it pop up in testing, my first instinct, which I think is kind of an interesting way of solving and might demonstrate something about how it's possible to approach clone Sudoku, particularly when doing computer solving. And so I'm going to walk you through that. And then I'm actually going to delete my entire solution, and I'm going to show you a way of solving this that I only stumbled upon while I was kind of reflecting on it, thinking about how I would walk through the solution, that I think is not necessarily better, definitely better suited for solving on paper, and I think it goes a little further towards revealing some of the elegance of how this puzzle was constructed. So stick it out until the end and you will see two very different ways of approaching this puzzle. And I hope that you find that interesting. And I'm curious to see which of them you see your own solve reflected in more. So tell us in the comments. So first solve. This is what I did when I first cracked open this puzzle. As I said, all right, it's clone Sudoku. I am literally going to start by pencil marking the digits one through nine into every single clone cell. And then I'm going to highlight the clone cells that are equivalent to each other, in this case, the top left corner. And I am simply going to methodically eliminate all of the digits that are seen by any of those. I know that they all have to be equal to each other. So I know that if a certain digit is seen by any one of them, it can't be equal to any of them. So I've got a five in region one. I've got nine, one, and four that are seen in region two. I have a six in region three, a three in region four. I see that I have a two in region eight, and that should be it for that top left corner. For the top right corner, I have that one, four, and nine again, as well as a six in region three. I have a three in region four, a two in region six, and a seven in region nine. Bottom left corner, I have a one and a four that are seen there. I have a three, I have a nine, I have a two, I have a eight in the bottom left, and I should have one more digit that I get to eliminate, a five from region one. Fantastic. Up, oh, and I'm having just a little bit of lag over here, so bear with me for one moment. Okay, perfect. Now in the bottom right corner, we have one, four, and nine that we can eliminate. We can eliminate two, three, and eight, and seven because of the seven in region nine. And this is the point where I said, I'm not 100% sure as I'm solving this that I've made all of the possible eliminations, but I see that they've all reduced to by values. That seems like a very Philip Newman sort of thing to do. So let's just assume that we don't have any more easy eliminations to make here using the clones, and let's go from here and start doing some anti-king Sudoku. So what jumped out at me at this point is that I have these quadruples, five, six, seven, and eight in this row, this column, and this row, and this row. 
And that means I can fill in the remaining digits in those rows and columns as triples. So these, for instance, have to be 1, 4, and 9 in row 7. These are going to have to be 3, 4, and 9 in column 7. These are 1, 2, and 9 in column 3. And these are 2, 3, and 9 in, column, in row 3. And by the way, if you're just tuning in now, I am not necessarily recommending that you solve this puzzle like this, and nor am I suggesting that this is the only or even the correct way of solving this puzzle. I am going to show you a much more kind of paper-friendly way of solving it in a moment. This is genuinely, though, what I did when I first saw this. So, anti-king rules now. This 9 sees this cell by Sudoku, and it also sees this one by anti-king. So we're going to eliminate 9 from both of these. And then we're also going to eliminate 3 here, because it sees this cell. So that's going to become a 2 and a 3, and that will place a 9 there. Now if we do this column, 9 sees both of these, and 2 sees this cell. So that'll be a 1 and a 2 with a 9 here. Here, of course, there's already a 9 in the region. 4 sees that cell, that'll be a 3 and a 4, and that becomes a 9. We can eliminate 9 there because of the 9 we just placed, placing a 9 right here. And now this 1 gives us a 4 and a 1. So now we fill those in. I'm also going to go ahead and grab a 9 in region 5, just because that's the last 9 we have to place in the grid. So this is about the point where I kind of looked at this and said, well, well what now? You know, I've gotten this really beautiful opening. Um, what can I do with Sudoku at this point? And the thing I settled upon was I have this 8 down here. This is a little suspicious to me because there are not very many 5s, 6s, 7s, or 8s given in this grid. But I eventually am going to need to disambiguate them. So what can I do here? Well, this 8 sees these cells. And there's already no 8 here by the earlier clone eliminations I made. So I do know that in region 1, 8 can only go here or here. So I've placed an 8 in row 2, essentially. It's in one of those two cells. That makes this not an 8. Therefore, it's a 5. So 5, 6, 7, and 8. My clones are now resolved. And now, because I've completely resolved my clones, I'm able to finish this as an anti-king Sudoku. So I need to place a 1, 4, and 6 in this region, and I have a 6 in row 2 already. So that'll be my 6, and I'll place a 1 and a 4 here. I need to finish this region with a 2 and a 7. There's a 7 in column 8, so there's my 2 and my 7. I need to place a 7 in region 3, and my last digit there is a 1. I'm going to place a 2, a 3, and an 8 here. 8 can't go in this cell by anti-king, so I'm going to eliminate 8 there, and I'm also going to eliminate 8 here. There's my 8. I have a 3 seeing this cell by anti-king, so that becomes a 2, that becomes a 3. Now let's do something similar down here. I still need 3, 4, and 5 in these cells. I have a 5 here, so this is going to be just 3 and 4, and that's my 5. That's a 3, 4 pair, which makes this a 1 and a 4. These are going to be 1, 2, 6, and 7. 6 can't go in any of these cells because of the 6 in the top left corner. So that's my 6, and now I need to place a 1, 2, and 7. Where can 2 go? It can't go here by anti-king. It can't go here because of the presence of a 2 in row 5, so that's my 2. The 7 tells me that this is my 1, and that is my 7. Go down here to the last corner. We need a 2, a 3, and an 8. 8 tells me that I can't place an 8 there or there, so that's now a 2, 3 pair, which is resolved by this 2 here. Then that's a 4, that's a 3. These are going to be 1, 4, and 6. Where can I place a 6? I can't put it in that cell because of anti-king. I can't put it down here. So there's my 6, there's my 1, and there is my 4. All right, now my last digit in this column is an 8, and I still need a 3, 4, and 5. That's not a 5, that's not a 3, that's not a 4, and by anti-king, I have to place a 4 here. Let's finish off the middle box. That's going to be 2, 5, and 8, so this is going to be an 8. And I have a 2 already here, so that's going to be a 5 and a 2. These two remaining cells will be a 1 and a 3. And these will have to be 4, 6, and 7. And that is one way of solving Philip's anti-king clone. Here's another way of solving it. And this is something I only stumbled upon as I was preparing to record this video. This is how I would hope that I would do this if I saw it as an on-paper puzzle, for instance, if I was doing a contest where I had printed out the puzzles to solve. So first thing, let's go to those nines. So by Sudoku, there's only one position for nine here. 
And now we're going to consider nines in relation to the clone regions. Nine can't go anywhere in any of these clone regions, because at some point, like nine is eliminated from the two cells on the right of the clone regions by this nine, and nine is eliminated from the two cells on the left of the clone regions by this nine. So there definitely is no nine in any of the clones. So where are we going to place nine kind of moving around the grid? Well, if we look here in the bottom left corner, nine can't go in those cells because of the nine here. By anti-king, we can't put a nine here or here because that would be touching this nine in region eight. This nine eliminates nine from those cells, so nine is going to go in one of those positions. So now we have our nine in column one taken care of, and there's a nine here. We can't put a nine in our clone cells, therefore nine in region one can only go right there. That kind of bounces around and tells us that nine in region three has to go there, because again, it can't go in the clone cells. And now combining with this nine, nine in region nine has to go there. Combining with this nine, nine in region seven now has to go there, so we've placed all of our nines. Now let's consider ones for a moment, and we're actually just going to count up from the bottom. We're going to count ones, twos, threes, and fours. Can one ever go in the clone cells? Well, it can't go in the bottom right ever, because of this one right here. It can't go in the top right, same reason. Can't go in the bottom left, same reason. Could it go in the top left? No, because this one sees that cell by anti-king. So there's never a one in any of the clone regions. Interesting. What can we do with that? Well, we can start pencil marking some ones and kind of figure out what positions they're going to go in. So let's start with the middle box. So this one sees these three cells. It sees this one regularly, and it sees these two by anti-king. This one sees these three cells regularly, and it also sees this one by anti-king. So I'm going to place a one there. That's the only remaining place for one in region five. Now I have these two ones that see all of these cells in region eight, and I know I can't put a one in the clone. So there is my one. Let's take that over to region seven. This one I just placed sees these three cells. Can't place a one in the clone, so there's a one in one of these two cells. Therefore, I've placed my one in row eight. So one in row seven slash region nine has to go over here somewhere. This one eliminates it from these two cells, so it must go there. Now let's consider those two ones. So those two ones see these cells. Specifically, if you focus on region three, they see all of these. And one can't go in the clone, so it goes there. Now if we look at these two, one can only go in that cell in this region. Now let's take this and this and observe that one now can't go in those cells, it can't go there, it can't go there, and it can't go here because it never goes in the clone. So there's one and one, and that will allow me to place a one down here. And this one I just placed will allow me to place a one up here. Let's do literally the exact same thing with twos. We have twos here and here. That eliminates two from almost every cell in region five. So we're going to place a two here. These two twos tell me there's a two here. These two twos, plus the fact that two doesn't go in the clones, which by the way, I did not explain that explicitly, so let's do that real quick. So two sees these cells regularly, it sees this cell by anti-king, and also this two sees the top left cell. So we know there's never a two in any cell in the clones. And by the way, the same thing is going to be true for threes and fours, and I will, I will try to quickly explain that as I get to them. So two can't go there or there, can't go in the clone, can't go here because of this two, so that's a two. Two has to go in one of those cells by Sudoku. Two can't go in those cells. This two keeps us from putting a two there, so there's a two here. Two can't go in those cells now by Sudoku. Can't go here, so it's there. And these two twos give me a two here, which gives me a two here. Same thing with three. Threes can't go in the clones, because this three eliminates three from these three positions in the clone. And also three can't go in the bottom right position, because that three, well, so does this three. They both eliminate it. So there's no three in the clones anywhere. So three in region five. Can't go there by Sudoku. Can't go here by Sudoku slash Andy King. So it goes here. Now these two threes give me a three up here. And this three eliminates from there. Can't put three in the clone. So three goes there. These two threes give me a three here. These two threes give me a three in one of these cells. These two threes give me a three here. These two threes give me a three in one of these positions. We know which one it is because of the three in row seven. And I can place my last three there. Finally, let's do the same thing with fours. These fours tell me where four goes in region five. And again, same thing, can't put a four in any of the clones for the same kind of reason. You can just methodically eliminate four from all the clone positions. So same idea, these two fours give me a four here. This four and this four give me a four there because there's no four in the clone. 
Uh, these two fours plus the clone cell there give me a four here. Uh, this four, that four, and the clone cell here gives me a four there. I get a four there and a four there, and I believe that is all of my fours taken care of. So I haven't even touched the clones other than to assess that there's not one, two, three, or four in them which is kind of fun. That's kind of interesting. It's a little bit of a different way to approach this. So now we turn to the cells that could be, or the digits that could be part of the clone. So these are going to be six, seven, or eight. There's no eight there because there's an eight in the column. And that tells us something kind of interesting. It tells us there's an eight in one of the two left cells of the clones, because where else could eight go in region one? So there must be an eight in one of these guys. And that means there must be an eight in one of these, but there's already an eight in this region. So the eight goes there. So our top left digit in every clone is going to be an 8. Let's do something similar over here. 5 and 7 remaining in this region. There's a 5 there. Oh, hey, that's a 7. That's a 5. And that actually tells us two more of our clone digits. We've got some 5s now, and we've got some 7s. Now we can just finish this row, and we can finish this row, and we can finish this row. Let's look at these two digits real quick. This one is going to finish off its column. That's a six. Oh, we could have also grabbed that from the clones. And now that's going to be a five. Finish this region with a five here and a six here. We're going to finish that region with an eight and a five and a, I believe that's got to be an eight. These are going to have to be five and eight and six and seven to finish this region off. And finally, a six and a seven. And that is another way to solve Philip Newman's anti-king clone. So let me know in the comments which one of those uh, more reflected your approach, or if you had something totally different. I'd like to hear about that too. Just let me know. Um, and if you are also quote unquote guilty of just fully pencil marking clones and then eliminating options, which is absolutely something that I do when solving on a computer, Tell me about that too. This is a safe place to confess. <laughs> um, all right. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you next time.